Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Inspire and Inquire. Um, of course, my name is Regina Bevos and for those of you who are just tuning in, I'm just sharing my spiritual journey here. Uh, I took a break last year and I wanted to really improve the product, get a Facebook page, get some equipment, you know, tidy up my editing and maybe have some downloadable links and none of that happened. <laughs> I'm still not ready, but I decided that even though I don't have any of those things in place, it's time to start back. So I'm here, just me, and I'm just showing up and making it happen. So <laughs> um, welcome back and thanks so much for tuning in. Now, as you know, it's Easter Sunday, very big day for being a Christian. You know, every Sunday we drink a little juice, have a little biscuit and it's because of this weekend it's because christ died and he rose this is the reason why we are christians so happy easter everyone happy easter so i wanted to look at the resurrection to answer the question you know why do bad things happen to really good people and a lot of us find it hard sometimes to keep hope keep faith to believe in god when bad things happen to ourselves or just really good people you know or just in the world in general how does having such a great and mighty god you know allow all of these these bad things to happen and i think the res resurrection explains a bit of that because if you think about it you know jesus is you know as good as it gets he's a really good person and when he was crucified, that was a really bad thing to happen. So a really bad thing happened to a really good person. But the purpose of that bad thing ended up being the ultimate thing. And at the time, I'm sure all of his followers and his disciples weren't able to understand or foresee even though they were told on multiple accounts what was to come, they still weren't able to see and understand the glory of God through this horrible and heinous act. And I feel like what we might deem as something bad or something heinous or horrible to a good person, you know, God, God may be using that to make something powerful you know, something unimaginable happen for yourself or others. So I don't think um, we should focus our energy on judging or f forming opinions on what's bad and what's good. You know, we, we should try and leave that to God. Because at the end of the day, if you really believe that He is in control, there is higher purpose than everything that we might deem bad might truthfully be for something good and it's kind of hard to think like that because there's no evidence there's no tangible proof sometimes you'll never understand and you have to be comfortable with with just accepting that out of faith and that's one of the things I really try to do is to look for the positive in any situation. I just think it exists. I think that just as bad exists, good exists. And it's just a matter of perspective and perceptions. You know, the pastor today shared a story about this Death Valley and it just being, you know, barren and just nothing grew there. And everybody considered that place to just be dead. And, you know, one year some rain fell, you know, they got about two inches of rain there. And before he knew it, there was flowers and greenery and life living in Death Valley. And for me, yes, that's a great story about resurrection. But it also just reminds me that the positive, the good is always there. It just needs to be watered. It just needs a little attention and the beauty and the life will, will bloom. You know, if we put a little effort, put a little rain, put a little showers of love into a specific area or, or a circumstance, there's life and there's beauty underneath. For instance, really 
petty example, but it came to me as I was driving home one day. You know, I live in a place where it's first come, first come parking. And I work late most of the time and I can never find any parking close to where I live. So I always have to park far and walk, walk up. And one day I came and there was a space like right in front of my building. And the gratitude that I felt inside it was just incredible, you know? I was so happy to get this spot <laughs> that was close to my home. And, you know, prior to this, I kept thinking I can't wait to move. I'm gonna get my garage parking or assigned parking. Like, I just don't want this set up ever again. And it occurred to me in that moment that when I do move and I do have my assigned parking and I do have, you know, my convenience, I've robbed myself of this opportunity of ever feeling this gratitude again. And to me, that was me looking at the beauty in something bad. Like, yes, it's annoying to walk, you know, a block down to get to my, to my, to my place, but it also sets me up for a blessing. It sets up that moment for me to give thanks and be happy for something I, I didn't have before. So that also made me realize that, listen, everything that is inconvenient and seems to be something challenging or barrier in the ways is setting you up for a blessing. It's setting you up for a moment of gratitude, a soul thank you, you know? And that's me looking at the positive of parking far. I'm just saying it exists everywhere in everything. And it's up to you to find it. It's up to you to water it, to shower it with love so that you can live in, you know, a mind state that's beautiful and blooming. It also brought up some other things to me, you know, in regards to just that, that phrase in the Bible about it being hard for a rich man to get to heaven. But that's a whole nother story for a whole nother day. Thanks so much for watching. I will see you again next week. Um, Inspire and Inquire has been resurrected on Easter Sunday. Bye. <laughs>